Good morning, and welcome to Grace Bible Church. The night before Jesus gave his life on the cross, he had his disciples together for one last special meal in time of teaching. He instructed them and all of his followers who would come after to regularly eat some bread and drink a cup And he said that they would do this in remembrance of him until he returned. We will be doing that together this morning, just like most every morning here at GBC. But first, I want to ensure that everybody here has their own copy of God's word in front of them. The Bible is God's word, and the Bible is central to everything we do here. So if you don't have a Bible, please raise your hand. And so that we can give you one. And and if you don't own a Bible, this is yours to keep. If you don't have a Bible, no no shame. Just raise your hand and we'll put one in your hand. And then open that Bible to Mark chapter 14, verse 22. I'm going to read Mark's account of Jesus establishing the Lord's Supper. What we're about to do together in in remembrance of him. Mark 14, 22 through 25. Let's read together. And while they were eating, he, Jesus, took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take it. This is my body. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I shall never drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. I want to make an obvious observation from this text. Jesus physically existed. He had a body and he will return. Jesus is the Son of God. He has always existed. Indeed, Colossians 1.16 clearly states, All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things. But then, just over 2,000 years ago, God the Son took on flesh and lived among his creation. Earlier in the book of Mark, Jesus himself gave the reason why he did this. In Mark 10.45, he said, He did not come to be served, but to serve. And the reason he came was to give his life as a ransom for many. So remember, Jesus physically existed. He physically exists. And at this dinner table in Mark 14, 22, all of his disciples could see, they could touch, and they could feel Jesus' body. They didn't need physical, touchable, tasteable reminders at that point. But in a few hours, they would be able to see his blood as it poured freely as he was whipped, nailed to a cross, then pierced through with a spear. Then three days later, Jesus would rise from the dead. He'd ascend to heaven, and he promised us that he would return, just as he indicated at the Lord's Supper. But while he was gone, his disciples, us, could no longer see him, couldn't touch him, We can't eat with him. But we all could still taste, touch, feel the physical reminders of the bread and juice that he left us in the Lord's Supper. In 1 Corinthians 11, Paul records that after Jesus Jesus spoke of the bread, he said, this is my body. And then he instructed his disciples to do this, eat it, in remembrance of me. Then he gave them the cup, and afterwards he repeated, do this in remembrance of me. Right, the disciples that night, they could see and they could touch Jesus, but very soon Jesus would be gone for a time. And while he was temporarily away from his people, he said he wouldn't drink of the fruit of the vine, and in wisdom he gave us physical, seeable, palpable, touchable reminders of him the reality of his existence and the inevitability of his return. 
in the Lord's Supper. Jesus still is. And he will return. But until that day, we believe without seeing. Doing this in remembrance of him holds a special importance for us who for a time can't physically touch or see Jesus until he returns. In the most recent Gallup poll surveying Americans, 81% of those living in our country say that they believe that a God exists. But for most, this is at most some belief in a distant spiritual being not saving faith in ever-present awareness of the triune God who revealed himself to us in Scripture, who died for our sins, gave his spirit to us, and who will return to judge and reward. I'm going to read Hebrews 11.6. You can turn there if you want. It says, without faith, and that's saving faith that that chapter describes, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, that he exists, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. In the Lord's Supper, Jesus gives us this physical, this regular, physical, seeable, touchable, tasteable reminder that God is. And that's a necessary content of our belief, and that he will return to judge and reward where he will drink, eat and drink with us again. Christian, this ought to strengthen your faith. But before you're too quick to separate yourself out from those 81%, at least many of those 81% of Americans who say that they believe that God exists, but clearly do not have their life affected by that faith. They have not come to saving faith. I want to ask you a, a question as you evaluate your own life your own faith. Have you ever been about to do something that you knew that you shouldn't? Something sinful even, something of which you would be ashamed if anyone were to see. So you looked around to make sure that nobody was watching. And then when you were pretty sure you were alone, you couldn't see anybody, or at least you're out of the eyesight of people around you, you did that thing. Maybe there's a website you knew you shouldn't look at, a TV show you ought not to watch, a word muttered under your breath in frustration, cheating on a test, taking something that wasn't yours, eating a bite of food that you knew was gluttonous, not doing what you should do, whatever it was. Have you ever done that? I have. And I acted in that moment like God did not exist. Or if he did, that he was actually less substantial in his judgment, in his opinion, less important than the people I could see. Kids, do you care more about what God sees or what your parents and your peers see? When you do those things, when you did that thing, God saw. 1 Thessalonians 4, 8 makes it clear that when you and I have done this, it is a, a rejection of God. The exact opposite of what God saved us to be and to do. And this kind of disregard of God is simply out of step with the saving faith described in Hebrews 11. That first and most knows that God is so why do we act this way? Why have you acted this way? Could it be that you're more aware of what you can see and touch than he who is actually most substantial? Jesus, do you understand how helpful this physical reminder of the Lord's Supper could actually be to your faith? Don't just let it pass. Do this thing in rote like, without engaging your mind and your heart because it's what we do every week. Don't miss this opportunity to strengthen your faith as you remember Jesus. I pray that today and every single Sunday when you physically touch the bread, you will be reminded of the reality that God is, even though you can't see him. And as the juice passes your lips and sits on your tongue, 
that you may contemplate the same Jesus who will return to judge, reward, and reign in his kingdom. The Jesus who spilled his blood for all who would come to him in faith. May touching, seeing, tasting these physical reminders of the God who was, who is, and who is to come guard you and me from God ignoring sin and spur us all on to true faith together. But perhaps you're here and you relate to God more as a spiritual concept or some far off distant reality. Perhaps even you may believe with your mind that the God of the Bible is real. But that mental ascent hasn't impacted the way that you live, think, and relate to him. You haven't turned to him in true repentance and saving faith. Consider Jesus, the perfect creator who became a creature so that sinners like all of us could find forgiveness and cleansing from sin. Because God the Father judged sinless Jesus for the sins of all who would believe. You can't out God's grace but there is no other way to come to him apart from faith. And so if you realize by your own assessment that you're not a Christian, please let the bread and juice pass when it comes. But don't leave here today without talking to me or another believer about how you can be reconciled to God by grace through faith. We'll have people over here on your left to pray with you after the service. Please don't miss this opportunity. Men, please come serve us. And if you're a Christian, please take these physical reminders on your own as your heart is prepared.